Hey, well, welcome to the channel. It's uh, Thursday, about 3, probably about 3.30 in the afternoon. And uh, we're down here in Hangdong, and this is one of the temples that I really, really like. I come here quite a bit and just kind of walk around. Every time I come, there's something new, to, new here. So I thought I'd start the walk out here, and uh, then I'm going to walk back into uh, an area in behind the temple that's pretty much a residential kind of business, residential area, to kind of give you an idea of what's here. Uh, it's a pretty neat little area, and, and I, you know, we'll talk a little bit. And I've got a story I got to tell you that I, I read about today. It's just mind-boggling. I, I, I read it, and I had to read it twice to really, for it to really sink in. But uh, anyway, and I appreciate everybody that's come into the channel, left comments, bought coffee, bought super thanks, and uh, you know, wish Leck and I a, a happy 20th anniversary. And we will be online, both of us, tomorrow night live at seven o'clock so if you want to tune in and talk to us we'll be right there and Leck will answer any questions you you know you ask or i will too and and uh, just be a good time probably be on for about an hour or so and uh you know stop in and say hello but anyway i'm going to turn the camera around so you can see where we're at and i'm going to show you a little bit around this temple and uh, then we'll go out and hit the street and i'll start the story now but uh you know as all y'all know Leck and i met on the internet and we uh, we talked from December until about I think it was probably late April the first time I came down. So we're like we're talking about four months, uh, you know, that we talked and and uh, got to know each other and kind of felt like we you know we had something going and. It was enough for me to, you know, to want to jump on a plane and come down here, and I did, and everything worked out fine. I mean, absolutely perfect. I have no complaints. I wouldn't do anything differently other than, you know, uh, uh, probably the only thing different I would have done that, that really has nothing to do with a rela relationship is, is I would have got her citizenship before we left the, uh, the United States. It's my mistake. Uh, we thought it was five years that you had to wait and we found out after we already got here that it's only two years but uh, for what we were interested in as long as she was a resident of, of the United States and married to me for for five years uh, everything's pretty much about the same but anyway back to the story I guess I, I you know I re reading the story and I said I was lucky. I mean, I was just really, really fortunate. And uh, I took the story and I sent it to, to uh, a couple of friends of mine that are actively online dating. As a matter of fact, that one of them has had probably two or three bad relationships already. And, and I wanted them to read it. But anyway, this guy, he's, uh, he's from Singapore. <laughs> Hello. And uh, he meets this lady on the internet and talks to her. And he's talked to her, talks to her for about four and a half years. Now there used to be a bird over here that was just really, really pretty. If I can see it, I'll put him in the video. Now they got the pond here. But I don't see the bird. The bird was in a cage around here somewhere. They may have uh, let it go. Yeah, it was right in here somewhere. I've got a picture of it, and if I can find it, I'll, I'll put it in the video. But anyway, we're gonna walk out the gate and I'll get out on the streets here. But uh, yeah, he talks to her for about four and a half years, and he decides it's time to come meet her. So he catches himself a plane, comes to Bangkok, and. I'm sure she meets him at the airport. They, they usually do. And uh, he's got a hotel room and, and all that. And she goes with him to the hotel. And, you know, it's just one of those things that, uh, you know, he, he felt like he had a, uh, a good handle on things. And apparently, eh, he got fooled. But anyway, they get to the hotel and it uh, doesn't really say what they did or where they went or 
whether they went out sightseeing or whatever. But anyway, she ends up spending the night with them in the, in the hotel from the best I can read. And uh, he wakes up the next morning. Again, it could have been a couple of days later. I'm, I'm not sure the story really doesn't say how, the, uh, how long it was, but he wakes up and bottom line is his uh, Rolex watch is gone, all his money's gone, and all of his valuables have been gone. And she's gone too. And according to the article, he feels like he was drugged and, uh, and ripped off and, and just, you know, totally devastated. You know, you hear you talk to a woman for uh, four and a half years and you would think there would be some, something there that would, you know, trigger your, your thought process to think, well, maybe I shouldn't do this. Or maybe I should, uh, should think about this a little more. It's a nice restaurant. This place is usually packed in the mornings. I have never ate here because I don't live on this part of town. Really sweet people there. Hello. Really, really nice people. There's some really nice houses on the street too that I want to show you. I'm not sure how far we'll walk. But we'll we'll, uh, we'll get started. But anyway. He, uh, I mean, he's, he's pretty much just floored. He can't believe that this has happened to him. And uh, he calls them. Finally, he goes to the police and uh, they do some checking and they find, find her on CCTV. The beautiful house right there. And it turns out that uh, they also have three other theft warrants on her for, for basically kind of doing the same kind of stuff. And uh, they didn't say whether they had found her or not, her or not but uh, I'm sure they will. They usually do turn up. And it was funny in the bottom of the article that, uh, that I read, it uh, talked about a Chinese guy that came not too long ago and he was ripped off for all of his credit cards and uh, quite a bit of money as well. And you know, for meeting women on the internet. Now, how do you protect yourself from this? I don't know, I can't, I can't give, you a, give you an idea. Now this is a restaurant that they say has pretty good food. I've never ate here. I ate here when it was uh, a burger place and it was really good but now it pretty much uh, caters to you know kids and and families that want to eat I have not been back here it's probably been 10 years since I ate here but it's really a nice restaurant inside a really beautiful house a really nice house was built back here in this line and the funny thing about this area is uh, about three or four years ago it flooded real bad and uh, I would, I would have been up probably waist deep in water. So, but you know, how, how do you, uh, how do you protect yourself from that? I, I don't know. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> I love those mirrors. I, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, there's only so much you can do. And the rest of it, you've got to rely on your, your own instincts. I mean, after four and a half years, you would think that uh, something would have told him something. I don't know. I, you know, it just baffles me to be, you know, beyond belief. And it just goes to show that people who are scamming will, uh, will go to great lengths to scam you. And... Uh, you know, I mean, for her to hang on to him for four and a half years, and then uh, go to, uh, you know, just wear him out, you know, it's, that's kind of shocking. I, I, I wouldn't have expected that out of a four and a half year relationship, you know, over the, over the uh, internet. Now, it doesn't say 
during those four and a half years, whether he ever sent her any money or anything like that, it makes no mention of it. But, uh, you know, I don't know, you know. Usually it's a case where you get a guy that's uh, been sending money over here hand over fist to, to, uh, to somebody, and then when he, they get here, you know, they get, they get ditched or they get taken for a little bit more and then ditched. And, uh, you know, those are kind of the horror stories that you hear about. But this one was, you know, it's kind of different. Uh, she hit him, apparently, um, probably the first, you know, night or two. And, uh, and got, his, got his wallet or his Rolex watch and whatever other cash he had. But anybody that brings a three, a million and a half bot Rolex watch with him to Thailand is crazy leave that stuff at home this is a new house it's just been built beautiful house in there i love those teak style houses really really nice and those two houses were just put up they're on the back street and i don't know if we'll get to the front of them or not but they're they're both for rent uh and they're both been rented already really really nice nice houses i don't know what this is All the pigeons. I don't know what's down up here. Ooh. <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay. He's got some funny teeth on him. Yeah, there's some really nice houses back in here. Let's hope that dog can't get out. By the looks of things, he looks like he's pretty well pinned in. There's two of them there. Here's another house, beautiful house. I wouldn't even want to try to put a price tag on that. No telling, then you've got, you know, just a regular little place over here. Oh, it'd be fun to live in a house like that. A little bit of land, you could uh, grow some vegetables. But, you know, to, to get back to the story, you know, tell me what you think. I mean, how, how could you protect yourself more than knowing somebody for four and a half years. Now I saw some of the comments in the, uh, where this article was posted and, and they said the guy was just thinking with the wrong brain, but four and a half years, that's a long time. Uh, you know, tell me what y'all think, leave a comment and, and, and you know, what, what was this guy's downfall other than getting ripped off? I mean, you know, we, we know that happened. But I mean, where did he make his mistake? How much, how, how sure can you be, you know, when you're dealing with a, you know, a relationship over the internet? <laughs> Hello. Oh, she does uh, alterations here. Now this is, this is why they just put this canal through here because this whole place flooded and they changed the, the locks up at the other end. And this is a house that was, has just been built. It's not been built very long, beautiful house. Again, I'd put this house probably, probably 10 million baht, maybe even more. You just get a better look at it when you come around the corner. But yeah, this whole area was up to waist deep in water. I believe they've repaired the, they've built a different lock system up there that's made it a lot better. And it hasn't flooded here. That looks like it's not even lived in yet. Beautiful place. And there's another one up here on the right. You see how the water is, is yellow like that. That means that the water's come off the mountain. And that's what happened the last time this place flooded. There was a, there was a uh, overflow somewhere up on the bottom of the mountain that, that broke and it just flooded this whole area. And uh, really made a big mess. I can hear something fluttering over here. Oh, there's a guy sitting over there. Two of them over there eating. They're clearing this land out. You can see him over there. Getting the bamboo.
Let's see, I could go right here and come back out on the main highway. Hello. This is your uh, OSHA certified ladder going up to fix the wires. At least his is painted funny colors. Usually they don't have anything out there. I think we'll go to the right here. Because this is kind of a neat area. And then it will bring, bring me back out on the main highway. Here's some land for sale, 15,000 per square wall. And I'd say that's probably, well, it looks like one rye, 2.11. I'm not sure exactly how big it is, but it's, it's a, that's a good size lot. More than you want to mow. Beautiful house right across the street. Hello, Swabby Cop. <laughs> it's probably, oh, that's more than a rye. That's, yeah, it goes all the way back deep. I don't even know where it ends. Uh, it's pretty hot right now. I, uh, I got out early this morning and uh, did my walk before the sun came up. And I was able to get in seven and a half kilometers this morning. And the day before that, I rode 41. So, or the two days before that. Usually what I try to do is I'll... Uh, I'll ride the bike one day, rest a day, and then I'll walk, and uh, then rest a day, and then uh, cycle the next day. There's gonna be drying their shoes out in the in the street. There's some beautiful houses back in here. But yeah, this was all. See, they got a little shop in here. This was all, this was all flooded. And when you go into a neighborhood, you won't see it now because it's like four years ago. But when you go into a neighborhood and if you're looking for a place to rent or buy or something like that, and you look around the bottoms of the walls, like you see here, see how the paint's missing on the bottom? That's from water. And you'll see it on a lot of the houses. That'll give you a pretty good indication that uh, that it floods in that area. And I hope my flip-flops aren't making too much noise. There's another just old house in here. I love to go exploring like this. I'm putting a brand new one up here. I've got to fix this. I hope I don't make too much noise doing this, but it's rattling. There we go. And then here's an empty lot here. Now I want to look and see what's inside this thing here. I'll bet it's a, I'll bet it's a well. If it is, they won't cover it up. Or they won't, you know, they won't fill it in. Yep, exactly what it is. A lot of times you go on properties and you'll see those things. And when I was in school, this was back in probably Probably 2011, I was going to uh, YMCA to learn how to put pasta thai. <laughs> and I didn't do very well. But there was a guy in the class, and uh, it was one day a teacher asked everybody what they did. And, uh, you know, I, another hot battery. Uh, I just swapped them out. We should be good to go here. But anyway, back to the story. You know, I told them I, was a, I had been a police officer for like 23 years. And, you know, the first question out of their mouth is, how many people have you killed? And 
uh, her shot or whatever. And I used to answer that question, but I don't anymore. I, I just, uh, I, I just don't address it. I just kind of smile and, you know, let them wonder. Because, uh, you know, I, it, it's just, it's kind of hard to explain. But uh, anyway, this other guy, he was a construction worker somehow. And I don't know exactly how he was, he was able to do it because uh, that's one of the jobs that, uh, strictly for Thai people. But anyway, he was telling a story about I don't know where that goes. I don't want to be too nosy, but I bet you that goes somewhere. Um, we were telling ghost stories one day, and I've told this ghost story that my teacher told me, and uh, uh, he, uh, he piped up and he said, talks about a house that they were going to uh, remodel. And there was a well in the middle of the house, in the living room, and uh, they were gonna take it out and the people wouldn't let him touch it. And he thought it was kind of strange. So he, you know, he, he inquired about it. And they said that uh, when they first bought the property, they covered the well up and they, uh, they pretty much made it so it didn't exist. Now I guarantee that guy would probably bite me. It's okay, buddy, I'm not getting in there, I promise. As long as you don't jump over that wall, you're okay. But uh, they covered it up. And it wasn't but a month later that, uh, now I don't know where this would go. We might walk it. Well, I know that goes out to the road and there's really nothing on the left except for a business. So I think we'll walk this one. That's a neat house. But anyway, they covered it up and the guy that, that, that did it and owned the house started getting real sick. This is where you can dump off your stuff that you, like your batteries, uh, you know, old computers or anything like that, and they'll, they'll dispose of it properly. You don't put it in your trash. And these are all over the, oh, all over the place in the city. Look over here. But anyway, he started getting real sick. Doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with him, and he was, he was, they say he, this is what the guy's telling me this. And, that the guy was on his deathbed and somebody came to him and told him that uh, the reason he was sick was because of the wet, covering up the well. Well, as the story goes, they, uh, they opened it back up and built it back up. And lo and behold, if he didn't get better, he can get out of the get out of the hospital off his deathbed. Now, whether there's any any truth to it, I don't, I don't know. But I know that you go to a lot of properties that have wells, and nobody touches them. I mean, they don't they don't cover them up. They don't uh, they don't do anything to them. They just leave them. And hopefully, they're made so nobody falls in them. That's always a questionable thing that uh, sometimes happens here. I uh, out walking today. I took some pictures of some of the landmines that I run up on while I'm walking. Because I walk, I walk through a neighborhood, but then I get out on the street. And uh, notoriously, you see different things that uh, are hazards when you're walking. So you always have to look at the ground. I always got to watch where you're putting your feet down. I'm curious to see how many steps I've, I'll end up walking today. This is a beautiful house too. Yeah, he's out there taking, Swati Cop taking care of his plants. Beautiful out here. I could live here, no problem. Absolutely no problem. At all. Oh, I bet I hit a dead end. Well, maybe I can go to the left. I don't know. Hope I can go to the left. 
I could live back here easy. Beautiful house. Yeah, I'll walk to the left, it'll get me back out on the road. Beautiful teak house. Hello. See the fang, fang. They probably don't see very many of them walking back here. But that's the neat thing about living out in the country. Oh, see that guy's a tuk tuk, a red truck driver. Oh, uh, people, people get to know you. I was eating breakfast this morning, and there was a little, little Thai girl with her mom sitting there eating, and the little girl just. Uh, wouldn't take her eyes off me. And uh, I'm used to it because they're not, the, the kids are not used to seeing foreigners. And when they see one, they, uh, they stare and you know, you smile at them, they'll smile back at you. A lot of times the parents will say, swatty cops, you know, make them swatty you. Swatty you. And uh, they're just cute as buttons. I mean, I just love the kids here and they're so polite. Uh, but uh, yeah, they probably don't see very many of them walking around here. Yeah, see, this will take us out back on the main highway, and then we will take a right, and I'll be back on the motorcycle, and I am going to go get something cool to drink and go sit in the air conditioning and uh, enjoy that. Yeah, that's see, they're really, really old houses. And the thing that you have to watch out for on these houses is uh, termites. Termites are bad here. Uh, I've got a friend that has a house not far from me, and uh, he left his house for about probably about two or three weeks, and uh, he came back, and the termites had already got into his his door jams, and and he had, he he uses the same bug guy I use. And, uh, so you really have to stay on top of it. I pay, I pay 4,500 baht a year, and the guy comes once a year. Hello, what do you got? Trimming this stuff out. He comes once a year and uh, sprays under the house. And then sprays, then he comes every, I think every two months and sprays around the house. I don't let him spray inside. Uh, I just, uh, I put up with it. I'll take care of that myself. And supposedly he uses organic chemicals. Whether he does or not, hell, I don't know. He, uh, he doesn't glow in the dark, so I guess he, we're pretty safe but I don't like them spraying in the house because that stuff stinks and uh, I don't think it's any good to breathe sweet home huh. this is a nice area to live but you wouldn't want to live on this road because you, you'd be subject to this noise all the time and it plus it's hard to get out see here she's selling her food and stuff hello Here's another. Can you imagine falling in over here. You'd, they'd never find you. You'd have to go. You'd end up over there somewhere. And there's no, no banister, no railing, no anything to hold on to. Ah, give me a break. And that goes behind and through where we just walked. And here we're back at the temple now. And see, here's another little landmine you got to watch out for. Unbelievable. And wires, look at this. You know, just waist high, somebody could come by and grab it. But that's that's what they do. The wiring geniuses. Well, I'm gonna make it back to the bike. I'm gonna go get something to drink and then I'm gonna go home and edit this and hopefully it'll be up tonight. And again, if you, you know, if you've made it this far, stop in tomorrow night at 7 o'clock and say hi to Lek and I. And if y'all ask, she'll probably sing a song. I, I don't know. I haven't even brought it up to her, but she, she, she keeps saying, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to? I said, I
it's so hot out here these batteries don't last very long and if the uh, if the sound is in and out it's because of the heat these uh, these microphones don't like to work over 41 degrees Celsius and it well may be that that uh, that hot. I'm not sure I didn't look when I left but anyway I appreciate y'all stopping in and we'll see you next time bye bye